Take me through, if you could, the different verticals of your business. As it stands, I think I have about five or six wings. Um, you got Impulsive, the always on, every single week podcast, talking <laughs> which had <laughs> did. There's Maverick, so the clothing brand that was built through the vlogs, which is probably the third wing, the media creation, the content creation wing. That is my YouTube channel, that is my Instagram, the TikTok. Let's put athletics into one basket, WWE and boxing. There's my artistic side, um, which I've been able to do in, in the later years of my 20s, um, photography with, with originals, and then the business building, Prime, and Liquid Marketplace. On the podcast front, Mike says he doesn't think you would be Logan Paul today if the podcast hadn't started when it did. Absolutely not. It's one of my biggest blessings in my life. I think the ability for humans to sit down and have long-form conversations day after day after day is highly underrated. How much can you discover about yourself by just conversing, you know, with, 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 with exceptional people? You learn so much, and then you learn a lot about yourself as well by just being able to articulate your thoughts. Yeah. And Impulsive has given me a forum where I can speak freely and people can understand why I am a little better. He was known as this kind of douchey character. And when he got put on this show and when he created this show, it gave people an hour plus uncut look at what this kid is capable of and where his brain goes and what his thoughts are on societal situations and you know racism and all these important topics. And he has some great takes. The BLM speech. That yeah. uh, you gave. I'm very proud surprised of Surprised by the extent to which it resonated? It is the most important piece of media I've ever made in my life. Finally, I feel at a good spot in my life where I can speak up and, and speak with my chest out, my chin up. America is racist. We are all incredibly unaware of how deeply intertwined the ugly roots of racism have embedded themselves in the foundation of this country. That three minute BLM speech, I felt was the first thing I did that actually had a real life, real significant impact in how people act. And that did what for you? Uh, just, just, just opened my eyes to the, the idea that I could, I don't always have to be a fool to get at someone's attention. Yeah. You know, I don't know if, but prior to that video, I don't know if people heard me actually like say anything important. The other thing this show has allowed us to do is make impact real meaningful impact and whether it's his redemption arcs it's substance abuse and mental health conversation here we can make a real difference and we have we put out so much of ourselves on this show we say a lot of shit, graham and sometimes it bites us in the ass right whether it's an opinion that uh is unsavory or uh, whether we have a, a, a hot take or a guest on that people don't like alex jones it was a few years ago yeah um if you were offered that today, would you still have him on? No, no. Uh, that's a good example of someone we probably shouldn't have had on the show. He's, he's just crazy conspiracy theorist, said a lot of f***ed up shit about Sandy Hook. We hadn't really had our moral constitution set yet or our rules as to who we host. We learned more about ourselves. We got feedback from the audience. We got feedback from the platforms that we were on. And like, okay, there's a guideline that you probably should follow for best practices. And that's what for you guys you would tell? Don't bring porn stars on your podcast if you want advertisers. Logan doesn't want to have sponsors on the show because he doesn't need them because he's rich. Off prime, future rich. So, so he- I'm future he, rich. Dude, <laughs> you know, He's been acting like a certain type of way. He just knows that like the wind falls coming. Like, dude, he created this like crazy thing. And I'm out here on the sidelines like, yo, let me get, let me get a buck. Most of the stuff that I've accomplished thus far has been on the internet, which is cool. But my goal has always been to transcend that. I was going to say, nothing wrong with that, though. Seeing the effect you have on the world, I think, is much more exciting to me than any of the YouTube content that, that I've made thus far. Really? I think so. It's like a respect thing. Like, there's a certain stigma that comes with being an internet like kid.
What do you guys remember from the very first time you connected about the possibility of working together on this? Well, I mean, for me, I remember Logan sending me the DM and being like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember thinking it's such a good idea that if I could get him on board, I just didn't see how it wouldn't be massive. I don't think we thought it'd be this big so quickly. Uh, so interestingly, you two weren't like the best of friends at, from the outset. It was awkward at the beginning though. It was awkward. When we like, first met since the fight, it was, it was kind of cagey. Everyone was looking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's gonna happen? I think we both checked our egos at the door, which is amazing for anyone to do. And then look what came out of it. So I heard uh, last minute uh, you removed yourself from a group chat. Uh, <laughs> we're we're going to be like done, not uh, go forward with it. What like what got you back? Oh, yeah, I did. did it? Bro, so I was just there like this is moving too fast. Which, which this guy wants to move 100 well, I mean, miles. Yeah, no wind right. train. They were moving so right. fast. And I was like, no, f this, I'm out. The next day. 10 million bottles were going into production for our drink. <laughs> then he left the group chat. I said, no. <laughs> I, I can't do this by myself. Please come back. And he rejoined the group chat. Bro, it almost didn't happen. Yeah, no. Prime it's, almost it's, did it's not happen. so close. He's just always pushed the boundaries. It's always been, what am I doing next? Sometimes I'm like, hey, slow down. We gotta like think about some stuff. But like, he always wants to go. I told you I'm impatient. Go. <laughs> I'm impatient, which, which is good for certain things, but other times I need to be reeled in. Absolutely. And it's also where a lot of my mistakes come from. I just move too f***ing quick. The, my my podcast on. is called Impulsive for a f***ing <laughs> reason. Nice. Can we get the film back? Yeah, they're dope. <laughs> uh, just keep it, keep it, keep it. <laughs> that's oh, sick. Hey, they're dope, JJ, that's sick. <laughs> no, these are fun. Probably three months before we decided to do Prime, we got offered like, a $2 million deal with another big hydration energy company to, to launch their new product. Be the face of it, yeah. Be the face of their new product. So like $2 million, be the face of a, of a really big brand, a really Globally. cool brand that everyone knows all across the world for 2 million bucks, damn. Logan's always bet on himself. And it was like, we could always come back to that. Like they're not going anywhere. Let's try to do this. And if it fails, we can, you know, always fall back on that plan. But I mean, I mean, bro, bet on yourself. This is the lesson there. Like, what the f***? Your long-term goal with Prime's what? It'd be nice if it sold for $5 billion. This probably looks so stupid. In real life, it looks mad stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but the final result is great. How's it going so far? Great, actually. I'm kind of catching my vibe. It takes me a little bit to get into it, but, okay. like, I'm having fun. Catching your vibe means what? Are you a dad yet? No. You can be a great dad, man. <laughs> you. Catching your vibe means what? <laughs>